ladies and gentlemen, booze and movies. Uh, it's been a yeah pretty busy week. Uh, it was uh, one of those uh, seminars where you uh, you learn how to get a bank a loan from the bank that you can't pay back, and then use that to flip a house that nobody wants to buy. Like you, you invest even more money that you can't pay back into flipping a house that you risk to sell on the market. So I'm so close to to financial freedom, William. That, <laughs> Why um, were you at said seminar? I might not have to do this podcast anymore. Uh, well, no, I actually, I'm kind of in between jobs right now. So I was really hoping that, you know, we get our podcasting checks pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Um, hoping. I mean, uh, we got a whole three views on the last, or three three listens on the last one. So hey, we have three followers, too. So I know. Fantastic. We're well on our way. Yeah. Two of those three followers are uh, fake people with advertisements. Oh, great. Yeah. Russian, so that's pretty cool. Russian bots, probably. <laughs> But, uh, but anyway, we decided to talk uh, just because of something you mentioned, a podcast you found on the way in, who is co-hosted by a person who we are a fan of, who is a third-party person on a series we're a fan of. Yeah. Um, I can't escape these people. I really, <laughs> like, I like being fans of them. And there's this little collective of friends and filmmakers and creative types that they've gathered together and, and all their associates. But it's kind of like, oh, they're everywhere. Yeah. And they talk about so many things that it's like a... A Simpsons did it type uh, effect sometimes where it's like, oh, they knew about this first. And if we talk about it, I'll be a ripoff or well, like and it's fun. And, you know, it's like I have the same opinions and I also have the same need to share those opinions. Well, we did vampires first. What am I? To do? Yeah. If they and do that's vampires, online that we did vampires. It's first, true. If they so. do vampires or slipstream. Yeah. Or even uh, firehead. Firehead. They and could, actually, we did Hollywood Cop first. It just didn't make it up in time, yeah. but we did Holly Cop, Hollywood Cop My first. Fault. No, no, but I'm just saying, we have yeah. the footage and it's date marked. <laughs> Carbon dated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, but there's, you know, it's a big internet and there's a lot of room for people on the internet. And, uh, you know, these folks, uh, they're the, they're Canadians. So it's fun to listen to their podcast, their podcast and talking about, about, uh, Things that they are for and against <laughs> up there in, in Canada. And uh, and also this guy is a – you'll like this because this will make you want to listen to it because this guy, um, Colin, he's a graphic – he's a computer graphic – visual graphic he's design visual artist, artist yeah. for big budget movies. He's worked on a lot of big budget movies. But he got his start, like his first job in the interview, and he, they detrail – they kind of derail their conversation talking about two bad movies into what he used to do for a living, which, which was his first job was working on the – on RoboCop. Oh my God. Not the movies. Oh, the Prime TV directives. show. Not even the, the B movies. The UPN syndicated TV series. Oh, from I the remember. 90s. I remember watching that. It was awful. And that, like, his his thing, I guess, I don't remember this. I remember he had the spike, the spike carried over from the movies, but he also had, like, this puck type thing. No. That bleeped and like a computer yeah, assistant was, type it, thing. Yeah, it wasn't in the it wasn't in the movies. But, I mean if there's anything I know but it's in the cop, show the, yeah in the it, show he had it. Yeah, That's what it actually, like his assignment was to make that thing work. Yeah, um, it, it wasn't even in the miniseries Prime Directives, which is actually since we're talking about bad movies, if you're a fan of Robocop, Prime Directives is awesome because of how <laughs> shitty it is. But he didn't even have the puck in that. That was just from that really crappy T V show. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, and what you just said there, that's kind of the, the thesis of this show is that it, like, it doesn't matter how good or bad, like, what, what matters is it's entertaining. Yeah. What the entertainment value you get. Now, I'm not going to be entertained. There's different levels. Like, I'll be entertained by a big budget movie like Dunkirk for different reasons than I'm entertained by Hollywood Cop, <laughs> you know? But, and it's all subjective, it's all that intangible. Like what it means to you, type realm of of content. You know? well, and I think it comes into like like when you say bad movie. I, I I mean I still talk to people at work sometimes when I say bad movie they hear, they hear a movie that's just done poorly. Well, there's movies that are done poorly that aren't good at all. And they're just they're just garbage. And there's movies that are done made exquisitely well that are just terrible. Terrible as well. Terrible. Like, terrible. Uh, Exorcist Two. Yeah. Or uh, Ishtar. Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything the DC's been. Anything in the DC universe. except for Wonder Woman. Yeah, Wonder Woman is great. Anyway, uh, but but yeah, so I I have to explain to people. It's like no, there's there's this, and you you said it before we started. There's this weird 
magic. It's almost like this unknowable algorithm. There, there's no there's no science for the science of how to make a good bad movie. No, and that's kind of like where it's it's lightning in a bottle where you get there's some movies where it's like they are the filmmakers are serious. They have a message, they have a story they want to tell and a vision. Yeah. And that vision turned out to be a plate of hurl on on camera, like bur- money burning on screen. That's fun to look at. Uh, and, it, but that, <laughs> that, and certain combinations of you know that's entertaining for two hours or ninety yeah. minutes or eighty six minutes sometimes. And well, uh, like, you you have like the room, you know, time away. So like you said, right. he had a vision. He wanted this movie made, and right. he made and he made this movie, and it's a it's beautiful because it's trash. Yes. And then you have. I I don't even know if I want to say hundreds. That might be accurate now, but like Asylum, the production company the Asylum, mm-hmm. they make these trash films, right? Like Sharknado, as like right? Sharknado yeah. and 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 Atlantic Rim instead well, they, of Pacific yeah, Rim. Exactly that they do the the, the ripoff, the blatant rip, like where it's literally the words are changed, like yeah. the opposite words, transmorphers. Yeah, transmorphers, <laughs> and and those movies they're bad. They're honestly very bad. Right, but they don't care that they're bad. And so yes. they're just bad. Well, I think, you know, and what, what makes a bad movie, there's like, there's poorly made movies that are good movies. Like I mentioned to you before we started Clerks. Clerks. That will be like my number one bad, good movie because yeah. it was made for 30, like a few maxed out credit cards and over, filming overnight in the store where he worked with like community theater actors and friends and three different guys play eight roles. And it's... yeah. It's a mess that they just slapped this together. But again, lightning in a bot, lightning in a bottle. Bump the mic there. Sorry. <laughs> if you're wearing headphones, I apologize. Um, it came at a time in the mid '90s where Hollywood and producers were like, "Let's find that young raw talent. Let's get the the movies that speak to the Gen X kids and the and those uh, losers and those slackers." That's where you had you know Richard Linklater got famous with Slacker and then Days and Confused at the same time, and and so. It was, you know, it's entertaining, uh, but when you look at it, if you're like a cynical person and you look at it like just on a mechanical level of like how the film was made, like, yeah, it was completely amateurs, total amateurs, but they did a better job entertaining people and made a better mark than some professionals have done. Yeah. Well, it's like, I, I, I noted to you this movie I found, I just ran across called Blood Car. It's a horror comedy and Is I mean, Blood Car parked outside the blood shack. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it actually it actually has a pretty fun plot like and it's a lot like Kirk's the guy the writing is there you know the the development of like why the character is the way he is is there all all of the stuff that makes you at least entertained enough to keep watching aside from any of the budget and and props and and things like that all of it's there and it's it's just this like quirky vegan guy who he's trying to make a car that runs on weak grass but he accidentally makes a car that runs on human blood because there's no more gas in the world. The world is out of gas. Oh, no. Um, and it's just his, like, weird fucking life uh, in reference to that. But it, it's that same lightning in a bottle thing. Like, th- this guy, the, through the whole movie, there's so much heart. Like, you could tell the people who were acting in it wanted to be in this movie. Mm-hmm. They weren't just doing it for a paycheck. The, the guy who wrote it wanted the movie to be made. The guy directing it, I think it was the same writer-director. I have to look, go back and look. But you could tell everyone wanted the movie made. And that's kind of what sometimes makes these bad movies is because everyone in it is like, let's make this movie. Yeah. And it's awful. Well, and that's like, uh, we go back to, you know, we mentioned Hollywood Cop and yeah. Amir Shravan, who he's at the other end of that spectrum where he's serious about it, but he's like, I want to make a buck. I see, look, look at what's popular. Oh, Lethal Weapon, right? Freewheeling uh, a white cop with his tempered black partner get into adventures and makes a million, you know, it was a huge... Uh, you know, it's career defining for Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, and it set it set the tone for like '80s buddy cop movies. You know, you know all the even the Hollywood had their copycats coming out, like you know, uh, um, the Last Boy Scout, or uh, was it the Marlboro Man and somebody? I forget what. That's like I'm sorry, I'm going way back, there. <laughs> way back. You're looking at me like, did you start speaking Japanese? I'm just, just trying now? to recall any of those, but um, I, I I was never. I mean, we've talked about how but, I'm not like a buddy cop movie guy, but then. So. You know, Amir Shrivan says, okay, I'm going to make a beat by beat remake because this is the content people I see Americans want to consume. It, like like they consume so much Pepsi. Is yeah. you know, freewheeling, fast talking, <laughs> white cop, angry uh angry police captain, uh who's 
you know, like, you get results, but you give me a headache, turquoise, you know. Like, get out of my office now. I gotta get some Tums. Damn it, turquoise. I gotta fill out so much paperwork because of you. And, you know, just, like, insert stock character here, you know. <laughs> and that's when we're, like, we even meant, like, the, the black partner just shows up halfway through. Like, he was... Was he supposed to be there all yeah. along and it's just like couldn't make started, filming? Yeah, or? he started filming it and he's like, oh crap, I forgot. He, yeah. needs, he needs the partner. <laughs> but that's like where they, you know, they. it's a very simple plot, that movie. Mobsters kidnap a kid, hold him for ransom because one of their ex-gang members stole money from them from a job. and So he can pay for his treatment for blood cancer. For blood cancer and his hose. Don't forget the hose. He's got his he's cheap hose. He's got to pay for his hose. <laughs> that, are, that are treating him for blood cancer. Because um, one of the symptoms is loneliness, yeah, uh, and erections, I guess. <laughs> but but anyway, like they go through. But there's so much more to this movie. There's a boy having conversations with a, a guard dog, and he there's, befriends the guard dog, and yeah. the dog apparently understands him. There's they in order to find the guy, Joe Fresno is his name. They find his cousin who owns a bar where he had, they have mud re- oil wrestling. And the black cop's just like, I'm going to... I'm going to oil ex- wrestle. Sir, I accept your challenge to my masculinity. I will defeat females in an oil wrestling competition. It went down exactly like that. You yeah. Can, you can go watch it and check me on that. Then And then I, I think our favorite part of the whole movie, and it's it's so weird. Anyone... I, I mean, I've, I've seen not only... I'm not going to say who our, who our people are who saw it first. Everyone's probably figured it out by now. But um, Red Letter Media. Red Letter Media saw it first. Dropped so many hints. <laughs> Anyway, but I, I've, I've seen other people online who've watched it too, and everyone, including us when we watched it, commented when that little kid runs by the outside of the house and there's the plywood sign with spray paint that says, free kittens. Yeah. <laughs> everyone. Because, and that's kind of like part of, the, part of the, the impossible algorithm is things that just kind of fucking end up in the movie. Because any, any other movie with a prop guy would have been like, this needs to look like a house, but we need not have any distractions for the scene. So this bright orange sign, take it away. Yeah. But there it is in this movie. Well, it's, they were very, to it's, it's very cinema verite, don't you think? To just film <laughs> in your surroundings. But it's it's a product of, you know, Amir Shavon doesn't have a budget to go get filming locations. They, they And this, this location, it's like three different locations that are uh, are all composited in two, different, in two of his <laughs> movies into like the same. Like there's the mansion part of the property. And then the horse stable part of the pro- – I bumped the mic again. Dang it. <laughs> I'm such an amateur. I'm such a fraud. Um, <laughs> and only because that, that and there's, pop screen. There's the swimming pool part of the pro- – and it's like it's all composited in such a way in film that you are supposed to think this is one big estate somewhere in Southern California. Yeah. And Don't forget the shitty grassy field. Yeah, that too. The where shitty they, grassy Where field. the end of Samurai Cop and Killing American Style were filmed. Um, but back to Hollywood Cop. Like the other great part of it was, you know, the scene that's introducing Turquoise as this badass cop that can just take care of business and doesn't play by the rules. He just, you know, he's like Dirty Harry and uh, Riggs from Lethal Weapon, you know. They're kind of like mixed together, yeah. Where he he shows up, like there's some cops hanging outside a motel and he shows up and he's like, what's going on at this motel? And they're like, well, there's a, there's a rape in progress, there's a gang rape in progress in one of the rooms, sir. And he's like, what are you waiting here for? Like, we're waiting for the lieutenant. Oh no! I, I'm such a good cop. I'm not gonna wait. I'm just gonna go and charge him with my gun, because that's what happens in Lethal Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, he goes has in no there, motive too. and like the other, like the uniformed cops go in with him. Like, well, no, we should wait for backup, and One they get shot. Their hand cut off, and then they got yeah, because the guy. It just so happens the the couple that has been kidnapped and the wife who's being forcibly uh, assaulted uh, are Muslim, so naturally. Uh, he has a sword, uh, like a, a, sh- a sword, yeah, like a sultan's sword. Yeah, on, he, ha- he on has hand. the the eth- ethnically stereotypical yes. scimitar. While he's wearing he's... his ethnically stereotypical robes yep. in Los Angeles, Hollywood, sorry, Hollywood, and uh, so he cuts off the guy's hand. He's this guy's uh, his wife is being raped by Cheech, a Cheech Marin uh, cosplayer, um, <laughs> and then he's about ready to, to stab him through the heart outside this hotel where Turk. And the uniform cop shows up and he's got his gun on him and he says quite possibly the greatest line in any movie ever, even better than here's looking at you, kid, e- even better than I love you, Han Solo. I know he says, dude, I know this guy just fucked your wife, <laughs> but he's our problem now. So just let him go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like I love how you could even say it with a straight face. Like I made it through all yeah, the way through three sentences without cracking up. And that's that. And it goes into the algorithm. And the guy shoot. The guy stabs yeah. him or cuts off. He gets stabs him through the heart. And the uniform cop throws up because he's a he's a rookie cop. He's not used to so much violence. Yeah, violence and blood. No bro. country for old men. Um. But yeah, and it's just it's just so deadpan and so. But that's why it's funny. It's it's rewatchable. You know, it, yeah. it's like you want that. It's like when people go to restaurants where they expect bad service because they want to have that experience of bad of being <laughs> called uh, a pussy for yelling off the kid, ordering off the kids menu. Yeah. And, you know, it's like. Well, and, and and to go into it, like we we mentioned, so I mentioned vampires. Like we did vampires first. So we we found this film. I so there was the. I I really hope this store is around, but somewhere near Modesto, California, there is this little hole in the wall strip mall store called Ziggy's. You new and used, but there's no new. They're all used. Uh, DVDs and games, and that's literally this entire. I mean, every wall. Every open area was tables or shelves of DVDs, VHSs, and games from any make and mo- any any system. Hmm. Like literally, he had Atari thirty two hundreds. They, they like a silver marker was written on it because the label gave out and it's just gone. Like and it, it was it, to me, it was like this emporium of wonder. You know, I was like, I walk in there, I'm like, I got a golden ticket. <laughs> you know, and he was great. Every DVD, and he had this cool thing. He's like, he didn't matter if he had collect- collectors editions of things, super rare games or movies. Anything in the anything in the movie shelves, two bucks. Oh, neat! So I walked away for five movies for with five movies for ten bucks. So one of them was Vampires, <laughs> which which my uh, my uh, brother from another mother uh, uh, found for me off the shelves. He handed it to me, and uh, it, it's it's as sad as it is to say, it is an exploitation film. But the description on the back sounded so ridiculous, I bought it. And we watched it for an episode of B-Movie Support Group. And I think at one point, all of us were crying because we were laughing so hard. Yeah. I started out kind of hating it because, like, oh, no, this is... Like, when they do the robbery, at first when they start robbing the guy at the beginning of the movie, I'm like, oh, really? We're, like, it's a guy sleeping in a bunny suit? Like, yeah. This is our commentary? With the here? ass open. With the ass open. Yep. And it's like, oh, I, I get it. It's a movie made by black people. So, they're, you know, all the white guys are going to be w- wimps or something. Like, okay, fine. That's great. But then, like, the the way he chases them out of his house. <laughs> it's just, they're just, and then the 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 scene, uh, we, did we mention the wheelchair scene? Or did we, were we, we just, we, we were just talking. Another, yeah, we were talking and we mentioned was that the on wheelchair in I one of these I can't episodes. remember if I was had a mic in front of me or not. Yeah, it was mentioned in this. But yeah, the, the wheelchair. Um, for So more explanation. Uh, in that movie, the guy hits a girl while they're escaping the robbery. Yeah, runs her over. Yeah, he goes to jail. Her. When he gets out, he goes to look her up to try to kind of like apologize. He goes to jail. His friend gets uh, bitten by a vampire. Vampire prostitute. Vampires. And uh, so I guess the guy who went to jail got the better end of that yeah. bargain. <laughs> um, but he goes but, to find her, he befriends her, and then she gets involved in it because they take her hostage. Yeah, somehow, her. I don't even know how the, I can't remember, I got to watch it again. I don't remember how the relationship is established because. He acts like he's looking for. The friend might remember her, I guess, the Khalil. Khalil, Jamal. yeah, maybe Khalil remembered her. It's not really clear how, why they grabbed her. Yeah, it's. I remember it pretty vividly. It's. It's not clear. She's just kind of like, "Hey, we have your girlfriend. <laughs> give us the. A, give us the amulet. Give us the amulet. <laughs> yeah. The what? Amulet. <laughs> I know this shit, where, this shit is real. I'm handling it. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a gun go off and he's deaf. And there's Next this, year, yeah. like for 20 minutes they're yelling at each other <laughs> because he's deaf. He can't understand yeah. them. So yeah. So this entire movie, uh, aside from any like like you know kind of like racial aspect that was i'm sorry it's intentionally built into the movie it really is it is a very yeah. stereotyped movie it's a black, sadly. you can say black exploitation it's not as well done as disco godfather yeah. but it's in that genre yeah but it, <laughs> but what it what it is like none of that is what's funny in the film it's all just the ridiculous st- like he he he's he's running away from vampire hunters that think that think he's a vampire because he has the amulet mm-hmm. he steals a bike <laughs> he rides the bike for literally four feet. He can't get the gears to work somehow. Yeah. And he can't figure it out. So instead of just jumping off the bike and running, he takes the time to spin the bike around and throw it. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it can be of any use, it would just be an obstacle at this point. Yep. And 
Then they tie him to a chair and they threaten him with baseballs. They throw base. They have a, a world class uh, minor league pitcher throw <laughs> baseballs at his head and make baseball puns while you know, like umpire puns, like oh, two and one, the fastball high and in, you know, up and in, <laughs> the high heat, and then um, yeah, it culminates in uh, the girlfriend in the wheelchair blowing up, and then. I just I'm picturing somebody like from off camera just leaning in into like, frame and lifting up the wheelchair, <laughs> and then someone throw, someone literally has just has a handful of fake blood throws it on the wall yeah and a paint splatter because it, it seriously it goes <laughs> straight up the wheelchair goes literally and, straight up and then you combine that with like okay you know there's always like jury rigged and weird shit done by special effects people to make it like the end of. Terminator, right? Spoilers, uh, Sarah Connor smashes Terminator in a giant press, like a machine press. Yeah, it's a tinning press for thinning out the metal. And then uh, there's this real cool close-up where you see the eye fade out. And it's literally like the smoke that's that's going through the scene is literally some guy smoking a Marlboro and just I actually saw I smoke s- through the scene. And it's like, I saw you thought the that was real smoke, you know? <laughs> I actually, I saw the behind the scenes because you mentioned to me, that to me before. So I looked it up and yeah, there is a picture of, and there, it's like, it's like, I think they had two guys going, <laughs> like yeah. blowing smoke. And like everything is duct taped together, like out of frame. And it's just all, and it was like, and it was the result of, I don't know if it was James Cameron or one of the producers said, wait, we need a close up to confirm that the machine is crushed. You know, the Terminator's dead. What can you do? You know, like, well, we'll set this up. And I saw another thing on Twitter the other day where, uh, like a big budget movie, right? Indiana Jones, right? Raiders of the Lost Ark. When they get there on the truck chase, and he he ro- you know he climbs on the truck and gets in and steals the ark back, and then he hides in the village. sala has got some people in the village to hide the truck, and then uh, Belloc and Ma- it's Belloc and the German colonel and Major Tote. Remember the Gestapo guy? Yeah, gets his face melted. Well, I guess the actor who played Major Tote wasn't available that day. So it's literally in the in the car when they they pull around and Belloc gets out and he's looking around for the truck and he's like all pissed off and the German colonel is about ready to shoot some brown people. You see, it's literally just a hat and jacket propped up in the front passenger seat, <laughs> representing Major Tote. And I've like I've seen that movie a hundred million times and I had to look at this screenshot on Twitter, just like, oh my god, it's right, it's correct. There's no, there's not a person. They didn't even have an extra. They just. <laughs> Put a hat on a coat hanger and a coat in the passenger seat. Which is funny because then you think it's like, you, you think back and you're like, shouldn't they have had the wax dummy by then? Maybe, yeah, they, right? Why like, did they, they just use the wax dummy? Right. It must have been in a, a different filming location or something. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the B unit. Yeah. Did the wax dummies. But just, yeah, it's like the things they do to get away yeah. with making us think that they are competent filmmakers. Well, then, <laughs> well, well, yeah, and, and you reference into that to like to like the props and the special effects and everything, but like Vampires has this beautiful thing where there is four safes broken into in the beginning and then in the movie. There's, all of them are safes that you could just pick up and walk away with. All of them are literally the same <laughs> safe. <laughs> They're not even different safes. And isn't they one like have a calculator safe. glued on it for like a keypad or something? I, I think, uh, I know the bomb had wires glued to the back of a watch and okay. that was the bomb yeah because the bomb was in the safe he had to open the safe within a minute to get the bomb out to turn it off so his girlfriend wouldn't blow up but he didn't do it <laughs> because she was distracting him she kept saying that's okay i i know it's i know you. your secret but i forgive you and he's like what oh shit five seconds yeah <laughs> and then he goes on a kill rampage yeah he kills a bunch of vampires with the help of the vampire hunters that figured out that he's not a vampire because they they just figured it out. Yeah, and then they leave it open for a sequel because he's like taking a break after killing all the vampires, and he gets a call like, "Hey, I heard there were uh, I got a vampire problem. Yeah. Can you help There's me out?" So many vampires here, man. Like, <laughs> that's literally the phone call. Some guys like, "I got I got a huge vampire. Yeah. There's so many vampires." Like, is there is there like a Yellow Pages? It's like one eight hundred vamp X or, or something. Or did the other vampire hunters like name drop him or something? Like, oh yeah, Khalil knows it, or Jalil J- Jakeem knows it, Jakeem. I'm so I racist. Think it, I, I think no. I think that was his name in the movie. Jakeem. It's, it's hard to remember. Yeah, I remember Khalil was the bad guy. Was the best friend bad guy. Yeah, and uh, who needed the amulet? Maybe it's like it's it's just like a word of mouth business, you know? Like 
like your friend it's like oh yeah i have a friend he's not he's not bonded or licensed or anything but he does really good tree trimming and you're like okay and you hire that guy maybe that's the same thing for them but with vampire hunting <laughs> like it's all oh man last time i had vampires killing my whole family i called these guys that i heard from from the guy at the gas station said they're really good <laughs> they were awesome man no, you like, gotta hire these vampire it's hunters. like the a-team everyone can catch them except the authorities <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> If your if your father owes money to the mob and you're a, an attractive woman, uh, you can find the A team. But if you're the Pentagon, who is actually looking to charge them with crimes, it's uh, it's a mystery. They're completely unfindable. <laughs> but that's TV, not movies. This is yeah. booze and movies, and we've been seriously lacking in the booze department. Now we're we're at uh, extremes here because it's uh, for me what I'm drinking is a naked blue machine. <laughs> <laughs> Which no, that's not for those of you in Oklahoma. That's not a, co- a cocktail. That's a that's a uh, fruit smoothie drink that you buy over the counter because it's Sunday afternoon, and I've already reached my limit of alcohol consumption for f- like forty eight hours, seventy two hours. <laughs> um, so what are you trying to get at? Not for any moral Steve? reasons. I've just you know when I was a kid, the big anti uh, drunk driving PSA cliche thing was friends know when to say when. <laughs> and I, I said when uh, early this morning. Yeah. Well, uh, t- to make up for that, I am drinking 62% alcohol absinthe, uh, lucid brand. Um, but <laughs> drinking, drinking, drinking for the both of us today. Well, I'm drinking it in a two to one. So I have two I have two one ounce shots of water to one one ounce. Well, it's not even a full shot. I had a half shot. And of, the sugar of, cube. And, and the ice. sugar cube. So, and yeah. ice. So I'm, it's basically almost like a four to one at this point. And it's it's good. It's not messing me up too bad. Good. Well, I've noticed you've been coherent this whole time. Yeah. So. What we'll do is on the next booze to movies when we're actually trying to booze out, I'll drink a one to one with no ice. Yes, and I will. <laughs> I will join you with that. We will plan <laughs> ahead for that. Yeah, you called me up yesterday, like, "Hey, uh, we're done with our stuff for the weekend. What are you up to tonight?" I'm like, uh, "I've been up since ten o'clock last night because I was drinking, and now I'm caffeinated." <laughs> I, I'm, like, I'm gonna take a nap, and then like seven hours later, you're like, "That's a nice nap." <laughs> I just like messing with you because <laughs> no, I just like I just like messing with you because I I do the same thing like I'll I'll tell I'll tell Heather it's like I'm just gonna like lean back on the couch for a minute and I wake up like four hours later I'm yeah. like oh okay well it's four hours later there goes my Saturday yeah and like with me like I'm a single guy now and I I just I don't make plans I just kind of hang out and see if anyone else wants to do stuff like they'll call me. And so, because like you, you have a wife and dogs and a house and cars that you own, and a life and a side business too. And I've, I never can predict what what you're gonna do. So I just kind of figure if you if you're available, you'll call. Oh, so okay. You're here. We're we here. Can, yeah, we can operate like that. So now we have a podcast. <laughs> well, uh, so so in reference back to vampires, like, and we were talking about before that, like, there's no there's no way to predict what's gonna be a good bad movie because I know in B movie support group. That was the whole thing. Is we were going to try to find bad movies that we didn't think anyone had watched before. Disco Godfather mm-hmm. was different because we had seen that movie before and we loved it so much. We're like we have to talk about this. Yeah, movie. and it's all we wanted the, the authentic reaction to it. Too, yeah, right when we're watching it and discussing it. Yeah, know. we want it the first time. Yeah, and we had some really bad ones like Extreme Teens and The Enemy were like these extremely oh. just unwatchable movies. And The Enemy has pedigree. It has Luke Perry, Rebecca De Mornay, and Roger Moore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It has it has people in it that everyone knows. Uh, I mean, and you know, I'm not gonna expect uh, you know uh, Luke Perry to be the most amazing actor in the world, but like you said, he's he's been in, he has practice, he has pedigree, he's been around. You yeah. know, people are aware of who he is. Roger Moore was James freaking Bond. Yeah, and it's just this crappy non-american film about this guy who seethes about his father disappearing it's got so many cliches and tropes about like cold war espionage and it's i think we've got to get the it's one of those things we got to get the formula to the virus they need a formula for they they, you know they're trying to get the formula as an antidote to the virus that the terrorists have it has its moments but it's not like you know we discussed um Certain movies like Project Nightmare has a payoff where it's like worth yeah. sitting through. Oh, but the God, enemy that's a great example. The enemy does not. There, no. Well, it does have, I mean, it's one of those things where you can just watch the YouTube clip of, of the guy, when the bad guy dies at the end, he is set on fire, shot, and pushed out of a building. And then shot while he's and falling. And shot while he's falling on fire. <laughs> like, that is just gosh darn hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> But watching Luke Perry smolder for 90 minutes before that is just not... 
Yeah, it just doesn't work. There's nothing there. There's no there there. (laughs) Project Nightmare. I can't believe I didn't remember that. That is a perfect example. That movie is two hours of nothing. And then the last, what, 25 minutes goes ape shit. And it's fucking amazing. Two guys wandering around, wondering what's going on. Thinking something's weird going on. And then they find there's, it's like, it's almost like Cabin in the Woods where they find they're stumble upon this giant secret uh, project, like ultra project or something. Well, in that one, the Project Nightmare has the best quote ever. The guy walks in the room. He walks into a room where he sees a scientist holding a pistol to a man who is choking a woman. The scientist throws him the pistol, looks him dead in the eye and goes, kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's frustrated comes, when he doesn't do it. It just comes out of nowhere, though. It's a, that's the, and that's the payoff where it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then, you, then with no setup or sort of clarification as to like why that would be near the end of the movie you find out that the doctor was experimenting experimenting on himself so the protagonist the doctor thought was part of his imagination until he realizes that he was a real person who yes. wandered in so the kill yourself thing but i don't understand the test <laughs> and see that's the thing again where it's like they they did not set out to make a movie that would make us laugh. They set out to make a high concept sci-fi movie, movie. Yeah. And it is enjoyable for all the wrong reasons. Well, and it gets it gets to the point like like when I said it gets ape shit because the the because that guy is so emotionally fucked up, he starts overloading the machine that creates real things out of your head. Mhm. And so the whole world starts breaking apart and going ape shit. And there's all this weird stuff with a girl that he apparently created earlier that there's all this weird hinted stuff that she is or is like his mom. And yet he's like with her. And it's like total recall. I do. You dream. You, she's real because you dreamed her. Do you even listen to yourself? Yeah. But with like a weird <laughs> incest overtone on top of yeah. it. And it kind of like. Because remember when he when she's like it's okay like like yeah. like doing that weird stuff and he's like mommy and like yelling and like weird it's and that's uh, also like could be the disconnect between screenwriter and filmmaker where it's exactly like, you know you don't you don't write a movie you write a script and then that has to be translated and it has to manifest itself into action and lighting and cinematography and 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 Continuity. things get edited things get edited for time and. You know, it's like there's this big uproar now because everyone's all on their social justice kick about in Jurassic World, uh, Jurassic Park, Part 5, Jurassic World, Part 2, Fallen Kingdom, Part 1, <laughs> where one of the characters like mentions that she's gay and that scene was cut from the film. And it's like, well, it was probably cut for timing. Like there's a million reasons it could have been, yeah. been cut for timing. It could have been cut for pacing. It could have been cut uh, just because it, it, maybe there was other information in the scene that was repeated elsewhere in the film. Or it sets up something that doesn't pay off, and it's like there's so many, re- you know, things that go into making a movie that, like you know, you've got all these different people. You know, the writer I did it again. Bump the mic. <laughs> you got the writer has one thing, the director has one thing, the editor has another. I mean, the producer has one thing. You know, it's all that, and then sometimes you get Project Nightmare, sometimes you get Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well- yeah, and Project Nightmare, I mean, I like, again, I, I said, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that one, but it's it's a beautiful example, too. Like you said, you need the payoff. And that's probably the best, that's probably the best way to sum up what makes a good bad movie is because you need the payoff for watching the bad movie. Yeah. Because I've sat through so many movies that are just bad, you know, and then you watch like a Don Dollar film where every five seconds there's a payoff of just something <laughs> freaking strange and stupid <laughs> and... <laughs> And, you know, there's there there's not this huge grand payoff. There's these little payoffs, you know, through the yeah. whole movie. And it makes it worth it. And then you have Project Nightmare where you have to sit for two hours. But when you get to that payoff, yeah. it makes the whole thing worth it. Yeah, with Don Dole or like, uh, I think of Galaxy Invader. Galaxy film, Invaders, yeah. The best entry level Don Dole <laughs> film there is because they're all the same, obviously. But we'll get into that. But the fact that you start off, I mean, obviously, the first thing the alien crash lands on Earth and, and in the woods. And that's every Don Dole film ever. But then all of a sudden you're introduced to this fucked up family. This little hick family in the middle of nowhere. And this guy who has one shirt and it's ripped and he just hates the fa- I get there must again it must be an incest angle cuz he hates the fact that his daughter has, his teenage daughter has a boyfriend and his son Well he got kind of His grabby. supposedly yeah. uh, his teenage son who was played by a 38-year-old man is like gosh Paul you know he's like <laughs> He's, he's, like a loon, he's like Looney Tune. Yeah, he's like Lenny. On, on, <laughs> on a, uh, he wants to play with the rabbits. And uh, I didn't mean to kill the puppy, George. 
Yeah, and he find you know the naturally this guy finds the alien's uh, ray gun and disintegrates a girl out of anger because she also doesn't want to fuck him. <laughs> uh, and like none of this has to do with, with alien. an alien on Earth, which and, is eventually you know they chase it down and kill it or something. I don't you know it's no like, they chase it down and they realize that it wasn't a bad guy. It just wanted its egg it orb egg. of power back. I was thinking a night beast. Oh yeah, night beast. Yeah, they chase it down and kill it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference in those yeah, Don Diller movies. That's finally a difference. Alien good guy versus alien bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like well, and to bring up Don Diller, there's the greats in bad movies. You have Amir Shavosky. Amir Sh- Shervan. Sh- Shervan. I don't know where I guess Oh, you know what? He's no. Jewish now all of a sudden. No, actually, Polish? that's a name. That's that's like a character's name in like a movie that someone was telling me about at work. That's why it's stuck in my head. Sam Shikusky from uh, Moonlight King- Moonrise Kingdom. Very well could be. I don't yeah. know. Hmm. Um, but, you know, you have Amir, you have Don Doler, you have Neil Breen, who, you know, we, we need to sit down and watch his films, but he's already notable. You know, uh, uh, Tom, Tommy Wiseau has made one film, but it was so iconic, yes. just right out of the gate. He's lived off that film. Yeah. And now they made a movie about the movie, so... Yeah, which was actually a pretty good movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. But uh, you, you have these greats, and I really hope Tommy Wiseau makes something else. It Not, I don't not see, well, writing off of the room, but... They just made Best Friends, Best Fiends. Best Fiends? Which really? like him and Greg Sestero. I don't oh, know really? if that was in theaters, or if it's on demand pretty soon or not. I'll have to, I'll have to pick that up. I think it's maybe their version of the story behind the room. I don't know. My, maybe. Well, Disaster Artist was written by Sestero, wasn't it? Uh, it was based on, he wrote a book about his experience making the film. Called The Disaster Wiseau, Artist. Called uh, The Disaster yeah. Artist. Or no, uh, well, yeah, The Disaster Artist, My Life and Times with yeah. Tom Wiseau or some like extended yeah. title to that. Um, and then uh, James Franco had a writing team write the movie so he could star in it. Because Franco actually makes a great Tommy Wiseau. There's actually an awesome scene after the credits where James Franco as Tommy Wiseau is talking to Tommy Wiseau <laughs> as not Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> it's actually really, really <laughs> fucking funny. Oh, hi, Tommy. Yeah. Oh, like, hi, Tommy. He's like, what you you want, are they throwing? Oh, please tell me they're throwing a football. No. Damn not it. Necessarily. No, but they're at a buffet table. And, and Tommy Wiseau is like, why are you against a wall? It seems like you don't want to be at the party. He's like, I'm just a guy against a wall. Leave me alone. And they're like, they fight. <laughs> and it, <laughs> It's 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 pretty good. Like at one point, randomly, Tommy Wiseau asks if he wants to come back to his place, like for no reason. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't scripted. <laughs> I follow I follow Tommy on Twitter, and he will if you mention him, he'll retweet you. He's one of those. He's a Twitter whore. He will retweet you any mention. Well, he likes himself. Um, I mean, it's very yeah. obvious that he he and like Neil Breen, he likes himself <laughs> a lot. So. Neil Breen, I think uh, <laughs> I started following him too because of. Uh, when I saw his, uh, I saw Double Down featured on that uh, one show we keep referencing uh, that we like so much, um, and they mentioned that he doesn't know how to use Twitter because he'll he'll use new tweets to reply to people that tweet at him. <laughs> so so you'll see a tweet, he'll just say no, because that, <laughs> that's his his answer to a, a yes or no question that somebody asked him in another tweet. Somebody, I guess somebody told him because I haven't seen him tweet like that in about a year. Mm, yeah, he so he's no longer out. funny on Twitter anymore. <laughs> But he is still making movies. He's making movies where he is a mythic. Every one of his movies, he is a super powered, supernatural, with some secret knowledge. He is a an ability. Yeah, he has like a tech genius with some sort of spiritual power. He as also well. he has some like knowledge. He's almost Lovecraftian in his knowledge of the subtext of reality or something. And but yeah. just come, it's just so bad. He has he has money somehow. He has money and investors. And I think he's one of those guys where. He might be good at what he does in real life. Like he, I've heard he he's may, in like real estate. Yeah, he might be one of those people that he so legitimately has a job that he makes a lot of money. Pretty at. good at like the sales pitch for real estate, and probably good at selling real estate. Just and not in the in movie. real estate game, <laughs> which is not movies. And I, I have never tried to make a movie myself, but you know, no. And I mean, I, I would, I would love to one of these days. I mean, I, I got a camera, and we have a forest near us, so we could make I, a found footage I, film I, real easy. Yeah. Probably what found footage film? They're they're what roughly two hours long. Uh, so I'm yeah. thinking four hours of footage. <laughs> we need total coverage. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but see that's that whole uh, the thing surrounding Neil Breen is what makes watching his movies fun, you know, and the fact that they are literally like somewhere to somebody they, this movie is comprehensible. Yeah, not to me. It won't be, but. Trying to figure out how this could be comprehensible is part of that entertainment there. Yeah. 
Well, and, yeah. well, and and there's the there's that danger with bad movies too. Like, because I don't think anyone, I don't think a, a movie ever hit the screen or or just made for TV or anything like that that people knew it was going to be a good bad movie before it came out. It almost it's almost like bad movies need this mass research done by the world and that's why the internet for bad movies is great because you have all these people putting in their yes or no as to whether this is an inter- entertaining bad movie well and it can it can create it, i mean there, there are people who run across great ones just randomly yeah but you know and like you i could, never heard about the room if it weren't for you who heard about it from other people who yeah. heard about it from other people you know and it's, yeah and there's always those hipsters who say well i heard about it first well, i heard about it first but i then, knew about the room in 2003 and i saw yeah. it in los angeles at the el capitan theater but you know it's whatever like when we're talking we're back to kind of our original discussion of like what make what defines like something as entertaining it's like well you know do do, do you be you man you you yeah, know if you find you, it funny you find it funny yeah you know and Movies are, are it's, it's a it's an alone thing or it's a collective thing. It's not like reading a book where it's just you and the words on the page and you can't share, really share it, the experience. If the shared experience is five or six friends laughing you know, hysterically at this horribly made black exploitation vampire film. Yeah. Then why is that, you know, just because the special effects are crap doesn't make it a bad movie. It's a poorly made movie. Yeah. It's defined, but it's not a bad movie. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean, we've, We've stumbled across bad ones. I I've stumbled because I I've screened a few movies I saw here and there because I want I wanted to get something for movie movie support group and I mean I I've sat through some stuff that like I'm I'm waiting for that payoff you know I'm waiting for that payoff the whole time that gem where you can say we discovered we rediscovered this yeah and I I mean I I just so many movies I watched that I didn't get it I think one I ended up stumbling across that. I wish we could watch it for B-Movie Support Group because it's just so fucking strange is this weird Euro sexploitation movie called Beast in Space. <laughs> That's the English title. And these people are with this like Han Solo-esque. In fact, they made him look like Han Solo. He's in this Han Solo-esque like um, um, shady merchant guy and he wants to go to this planet where there's supposed to be a shit ton of this or or mineral that's really really popular they go there and they're all in like these tight ass fucking like latex suits right all of them and the women because especially space. wait yeah because space <laughs> and because euro sex extravaganza and so they go there immediately while they're on this planet they see horses fucking so of course the girls start grabbing their breasts and rubbing their crotches because why wouldn't you when you see horses fucking, man right? if we did that i would have to spend a week just censoring <laughs> the, those scenes with well, black boxes what makes it hold and, on. and kevin's face so they find one guy who lives on the planet and he runs the whole planet, right? But he has this weird signal throughout his planet that makes people horny and want to have sex with each other so that he can keep them under control because he himself is a computer that creates computer. real things disguising, disguised as a giant penis satyr or excuse me, centaur okay. who is disguised wow. as a man. I'm like a giant... <laughs> Penis, the Seder, like, you mean the Jewish dinner that they have at no, Passover? No, Seder is in, like, oh. the half goat man. Oh, that? Seder. Seder. Seder, the mythical beast of Seder. Oh, I thought that was a centaur. No, centaur is the half horse man. Or, oh, or a bull. I thought a bull? Huh? What? No. Who? Oh, no, a centaur, that is the bull. I'm sorry, I'm thinking, um, um, no, it is centaur. Yeah, no, centaur is half horse. I'm trying to think of, of the half bull. Anyway. Hmm. But anyway, he's yeah he's he is a robot. Dis- he is a robot disguising himself as a half beast, giant penis creature who is disguising itself as a man in the mansion. And like the main girl ends up like getting done stuff by the beast man. But it's but it's really a computer. But it's the guy in the mansion. But it's a beast man. But it's the computer. <laughs> I'm a computer. And if what's great is if you took all the sex elements out of it, it would still be a really fucking weird, funny Euro movie. Yeah. But yeah, it has too much for you. We would not be able to get that up on YouTube without you spending a good year and a half censoring every little mm. thing. <laughs> Maybe that's a challenge I should go for, though. There's very little actual nudity, hmm. but there is a giant foam penis at one point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm a computer. I love that. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone watch the G.I. Joe redubbed PSAs. Oh They're just God. beautiful. Pork chop sandwiches. 
What the kids are you doing on my fucking lawn? Get off my fucking lawn. <laughs> give him the stick. stick. Don't give him the <laughs> stick. <laughs> oh. oh my God. I think we're done. Yeah. Maybe we're done. Has it been like an hour yet? It's been 44 minutes. That's enough. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, everyone out there uh, who ends up listening to this, find and watch bad movies. If you've never been a bad movie person, Take the time, look up on the internet, like, look up top 10 best bad movies. Look up top three best bad movies. It doesn't matter. Heck, just get, just watch The Room. You know, if if, and, if, if you want a mainstream bad movie, just just watch yeah. The Room. And, you know, you don't have to be all hipster like we are. Go to actual stores and look for VHS tapes, like yeah. original content. Just, Amazon Prime has a ton of crappy B-movies. Oh, Amazon Prime is my, is my gold line. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Amazon Prime is beautiful. Just, just. Seriously, people go out there, watch a bad movie. Bad movies are great. They're fun. And like Steven said, don't just watch them on your own. Get a group of friends together. Get some popcorn. Everyone get about, yeah, I'd say, what, three quarter, half, fully buzzed, maybe more. Some of them you'll need more. Yeah, some of them you'll need more. But you need another glass of that absinthe. <laughs> but do it, guys. It really is. It's so, it's so fun to experience good, bad films. And with that... I'll absinthely bid you adieu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and we're out.